Hi folks and uh, welcome back to uh, episode 2. Uh, in episode 2 I thought I would uh, put together all the mechanisms that I'm going to be using for the uh, campaign and battles. Um, so first of all we're going to have a look at the uh, map movements themselves. Um, as you recall from uh, the episode 1, uh, divisions have momentum points and uh, as long as the momentum point stays uh, the six and above they will continue carrying out orders in other, other words they can advance into a square even if it's occupied by an enemy that just brings about a, a tabletop encounter uh, movement itself is always uh, straightforward or to the side um, there's no diagonal movements um, just don't know why but <laughs> just going to keep it that way um, so as I say, as long as you uh, the division has a uh, momentum score of six and above, they will carry on orders and advance as ordered. Once they drop to five and below, that's when problems start happening. And uh, for that, I basically roll two d6. And um, if they pass the uh, d6, they carry on and advance with orders. If they uh, fail, they uh, basically go on to hold and there's no movement for that turn, i.e. for that hour. Um, that's the basics of the uh, campaign moving on the uh, battle itself. Um, for the actual battle itself, slide down there, and I'll show you the basics of how I'm going to uh, transfer the uh, staff ratings. These are the staff ratings taken directly from the Black Powder rulebook. Uh, staff rating 9 being outstanding five as they state in the book you shouldn't have turned up um, if you look along the column you have uh, order factors this is used uh, for when at the end of the uh, battle what I've called a recovery phase uh, this is the reference to the bonuses that you get for the d6 dice when you roll uh, that'll be for um, trying to remove as many as the um, hit counters on the momentum these guys over here and um, also, to see whether or not troops that you lost on the battlefield that have lost a uh, run off the table, etc. Uh, whether or not they're going to carry on to the battle and rejoin their uh, brigades. Um, next along is the attack and the defence. This basically works out the um, for the strategies. Uh, the strategies uh, thing I've come up with is um, basically to link the battles together. Um, what happens is um, I roll a d6, uh, these strategies are added to the d6 dice rolls, whole things amalgamated into a point, and um, what that basically transfers into is that uh, a division, be it attacking, defending, or just holding position, is um, how well they will do that, and that's transferred into basically um, casualty rates. Once a division has hit that casualty rate number, it's more or less a break point for that division and they start withdrawing from the battle. Uh, it's just a way of sort of adding a little bit of realism into the battle. Um, it also makes sure that both sides, because this is a solo game, um, I'm going to be playing both sides basically, though I'm airing more to the French, shall we say, um, but the mechanisms that uh, you just play both sides. Uh, just make sure that you don't uh, carry on fighting to an un unnecessary conclusion with ridiculous casualties. It just means that uh, once the uh, division has reached that break point, it's game over and it's time to look at the recovery stage. Um, that's pretty much it for uh, how the uh, campaign is going to be run. Um, I'm hoping to bring uh, the first movements on the campaign map shortly and uh, hopefully uh, even the first tabletop encounter um, as I say uh, one one last thing as you remember the uh, counters uh, the counters are numbered because that, that represents the uh, brigades within the division um, we look up first of all let's take fifth division as you can see, the divisions are numbered one, two, three, four, and uh, obviously for each adverse situation within the battle, uh, broken units, lost units, such as that, uh, one of the counters will be thrown in to the mix, and then uh, you'll be uh, 
add it up, dice rolls at the end of it to see in the recovery phase how much of the damage can be removed <laughs> before it's added obviously to the divisional momentum bar and that obviously will affect the uh, moving of the divisions on the battle map itself. Um, as I say, hopefully uh, things will start hotting up soon when I start doing some dice rolling and start doing some movement on the tables. Um, one uh, actually last thing we've got to mention, of course, is the actual um, battle itself and um, what's actually going on. Um, as I say, for the most part, I'm playing the French, uh, but obviously once it comes to the battles, the mechanism just means I'm playing both sides of the best. Um, but 5th Division, which actually is already on the table, uh, already on the map, I should say, uh, their orders are to advance north via the uh, village of Slip. <laughs> awesome name. <laughs> um, and then continue on to the uh, centre position in front of Hanon and basically await orders. Uh, so their movement will start from here, they'll move across up, maybe a little bit of a counter in here, and then move across to there. Uh, fourth division, commanded by Cobas, he is to um, advance north and move up through onto the west of Halm. So he'll be moving up in this direction and moving to this position there, taking up position on the west. And she'll be followed by the tenth division under Lord. He is to uh, advance east onto the east slopes so he'll be moving across here and up into this position and the reserve under Donnell's is going to be moving into this position here ready for the reserve into the centre. Um, the idea I think is that the French are going to try and push their weight first of all on this flank prelude to a large assault with uh, the 5th division on the town, uh, the um, reserve division if the fifth division don't complete, we'll then take the uh, take on the mantle and then move in as well. And uh, the uh, fourth division, had to look at my notes then, uh, will be in this position here and uh, stopping any uh, help being moved across. If they try and move, they'll move on themselves and uh, hold them in position. Um, the idea is obviously I'm going to be fighting sort of a battles sort of uh, so that it's going to be a linked campaign but the battles themselves are going to be sort of one-offs um, just to see what happens I mean if there's a, a crushing defeat in the French here then obviously the the Austrians will be applying pressure onto this hit section here um, again obviously if the uh, French uh, destroy or at least break this division here they'll obviously be able to apply pressure onto the Austrian centre so uh, the games are semi-linked uh, and uh, obviously troops will be making appearances uh, to help each other out. Uh, but that's pretty much the whole idea of the campaign. Um, as I say, I'll bring shortly the first uh, couple of turns, maybe three or four turns if things go well. And uh, hopefully the first clash of the campaign. Um, as always, thanks for watching. I hope uh, some of that, maybe all of that made sense. If it didn't, just leave me uh, a message in the comments and I'll get back to you and hopefully explain things a lot better. And um, as always, thanks for taking the time to watch the videos and um, I'll see you soon and bye for now.